Hey guys, welcome to Stuffbox. In this video, we'll talk about how to set up virtual machine, specifically Windows Server, on Google Cloud Platform. I'll show you how to activate your billing account, create budget alerts so you don't get charged huge fees from Google Cloud, set up the virtual machine, install other software, reconfigure the virtual machine, and finally, delete the virtual machine if you no longer need it. Now let's begin. In order to install Windows Server, you need to activate your billing account first before proceeding. So if you sign up for a trial, click on the Activate button on the right and then click Upgrade. Once you've activated your account, I suggest you set up a billing alert. This way, you don't get any surprise charges on your credit card. From your console, click on the menu on the top left and then you want to go with Billing. I'm going to pin this. On the left side, look for Budgets and Alerts. Then click the Create a Budget button. And then you can name it to whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Budget Alert 01. And for projects, if you have multiple projects, it will list there since there's only one. You already selected the first one. For products, you can select specific one, but I'm going to click All. And click OK there. Now click Next. So now for our budget type, we want to leave it a specified amount. And then for target amount, we're going to put $1. Or you can put $0.50 cents if you wish. Now the only other thing you want to do is uncheck Include Credits in a Cost because I'm only concerned when it starts going over my credit. Then click Next. On the Action window, it automatically set it as 50, 90, and 100% threshold. You can set it to a different percentage, but I'm going to leave it like this. We'll get a notification every time it hits 50, 90, and 100%. Everything else will leave unchecked and then now click finish. So based on my previous usage, it already tells us that I've reached my capacity for this month, but it's not going to give me an alert because we set it to notify me after the credit. So now we are ready to set up our Windows virtual machine. So let's go to Compute Engine and VM Instance. Click the Create button. For instance name, set it to whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Windows 2019. It needs to be all lowercase. For region, you want to set it to the closest to your location. I'm in central, so I'll leave it as central. For machine type, this is where you'll pick your CPU. If you choose a higher CPU, it's going to end up costing you more. But I'm going to experiment on this because I want the faster CPU and more memory. For boot this, it's currently set up for Debian. I'm going to change this. This is where you want to choose your operating system. I'm going to choose Windows Server. Then click the version and scroll all the way down. Make sure you pick Windows Server 2019 Data Center. Then I'm going to leave the boot disk on standard persistent disk and at 50 gigs. Then I'll leave everything else the same. So now we're ready to create. I'm going to fast forward this part. This should take about a minute to set up because we've set it up with a faster CPU and more RAM. Okay, great, now it's created. So now the next thing we need to do is set a Windows password. For username, I'm gonna change this to myadmin01. And then I'm gonna set it. Then copy this password. Now the next thing we need to do is download the RDP file. Click the link here and it will download the file. And then click OK. To open this on a Windows machine, you can Google Microsoft Remote Desktop Software and you should be able to find the Windows version. On a Mac, you're going to need to download the Microsoft Remote Desktop Software from the App Store. Since I already have it on my Mac, I'm going to go to the file that I downloaded and then double click it. It will give us this normal certificate warning. So click continue and then enter your username and password and then click continue again and this should launch our Windows Server. I'm just going to readjust this window so you can see it on my screen capture. Once Windows Server boots fully, it should open Server Manager dashboard. Now, if you want to download any software from the web, open Internet Explorer. You'll get this Internet Explorer warning. Click OK. As an example, let's download Google Chrome. You'll get this security alert. You can click in the future to not show this warning and then click OK. Then it will give you a warning that the content is blocked. 
and you click close, it will give you another warning. This is a normal warning on Internet Explorer on a Windows server. To fix that, click on this cog wheel and click internal options. Click the security tab and then click the trusted sites and then click sites button. Then add the website here and then click add. I'm also going to add google.ca and then click OK here. If we search Google Chrome, we'll get more warnings about content being blocked. I'm just going to ignore that because once we download Google Chrome, we won't get all this warning. This is a normal warning on Internet Explorer running on Windows Server because Windows Server is not really meant for browsing the internet. I'm going to click download Chrome and we'll get a different security alert that we can't download any file. To fix that, go to internet options again and go to security tab again, click custom level and look for downloads and then click enable. And then it will give us confirmation, click yes and then click apply and then OK. You might have to refresh the page or click back. And then once you click download, you should be able to save and then run the file. I'm going to fast forward this part. And then we now have Google Chrome installed. Now let me show you how to edit this hardware configuration. Every time you want to edit a virtual machine, you always have to shut it down first. And then once it's fully shut down, you should be able to click on your VM instance, then click edit. And from here, you can modify the CPU and the memory. I'm going to slow this one a bit. And if you want to modify the network card and make it static, you can also do that here. And if you want to add more virtual disks on this virtual machine, click here. It's configured to add 500 gig hard drive, but you can add more if you want. Now click done. And then once you, all that configuration is finished, click save. That would take a few minutes for it to take effect. And once it's done, click start and start your server. When you shut down your Windows server, there's a chance your IP address has changed and you won't be able to access that server using your old RDP file. When that happens, you'll need to re-download your RDP file. And to prevent this, change your IP address to static. Once you're done with your VM instance, I suggest you delete that VM instance to prevent Google Cloud from charging your credit card. To delete it, go to your VM instance and click on the ellipsis and select delete. You will need to shut down the server first before it allows you to delete. If you want to know how to install Windows on your Mac using VirtualBox, click the link here. If you found value in this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching.